Welcome back to this lithium series where I've been swapping out our entire system to lithium. This is hopefully, fingers crossed, the last episode in this series. I've already talked you through why we're switching to lithium. I've showed you the process of actually building my battery, which is a 600 amp hour bank with all custom parts. And I've also showed you the rest of the system and talked you through the reasons why I've chosen all the components that I've chosen. All of the links to those videos is in the description and all of the parts that I've used will be in the description as well. That's from the actual batteries I've used, hopefully if I can find them, um, as well as every component from the battery build to the, to the other components required for this. But yeah, this episode, let's get this all installed. Everything is hopefully ready to go. And I just need to take the old batteries out put the new ones in and tidy up some wiring. So let's get this done. Okay, so that's now all the wires tidied up underneath the floor, everything's packed away. And I probably shouldn't have done that because we've got an AIS coming in two weeks and I need to do it all over again, but we've got it sorted. And now I'm just gonna start taking wires off and get ready to drop this in. My biggest concern is the height of the battery box. So the compartment where the battery box is actually gonna go is about 34 centimeters, about 13 and a half inches. The box is 12 and a half inches, but the wires stick out, the big wires stick out almost an inch. We'll see, it's gonna be super tight as the weather can actually fit in. But if, that's, if that works out well, I still don't know what orientation I'm gonna run the battery. So things are still gonna be temporary until I still actually get for definite my um, inverter. So this is the current state of the batteries. So we have both charge controllers in this little spot. We have a massive big waste of space over there, which you can't put anything on. And we have the DC to DC charger mounted right there. And all of the bus bars right there which is what everything's going to connect to let's get these big batteries out they weigh an absolute ton but also <laughs> to be honest the lithium batteries weigh a lot as well now in comparison to 600 amp hours of lead acid or AGM yeah they weigh nothing but 600 amp hours in one box with the BMS is the shunt everything on it it's like I would hazard a guess at 50 kilograms so hopefully the box doesn't collapse <laughs> so okay before we actually go any further um I have had this massive question for probably a year. Um, so we have all of the cables coming off the batteries, um, like normal. This cable right here is our main positive for the house systems, for like the lights and the fridges and everything. But there's no negative cable here. Um, the negative cable comes off the starter battery, which is so, so bizarre. It's this one right here. Um, and it's taken me months to figure out why or where this negative cable is and yesterday I found it We've been using our starter batteries and our house batteries as our house load this entire time Which isn't great for the kind of degradation of the starter battery. So Yeah, that might not need replaced depending on how bad the quality is um, and Yeah, but we're going to keep one of these AGMs anyway just in case that does happen and I need to swap it out it does seem to be okay for starter battery, so let's see. It's just things like that. Whenever you buy a second-hand boat that other people have done stuff to, it's just so bizarre. There's a lot of things on this that should not be done. <laughs> so yeah, let's get everything sorted and fix the absolute mess that is this battery system. Okay, switch is off, everything's off, and now we are going dark. Hopefully, we've got enough light here to work, but everything now has to come off these, and I have to just make sure that nothing shorts out. Just be super careful, take off any rings, take off a watch, um, and just have some electrical tape on hand in case you need to wrap up some ends. So, take them off. Now we've got the MPPT um, positive and negative, so let's just take them out, run them over, and then tidy the cables up. Okay, so that's the first one in. The negative actually just goes right in behind these flaps here, as you can see, just underneath. And then the positive just clips in there. Both positives and negatives for both MPPTs coming through here. The middle one there is a 60 amp fuse. That's going to go to this guy. And then over on the far side is going to be for the house side. This this other one over here, the other 100 amp fuse, is going to be for the house load. So the only thing I need to do now is 
attached to house load really and that's it okay so because of my whole problem with the um the current house load being used from the starter battery this cable right here is that it's obviously not going to stretch all the way through to here so i've got this extra cable which is actually being used to go between these batteries and that battery and i'm literally just going to connect this to that one using a nut and bolt hopefully that can just give me enough reach to actually get all the way over here and that should now give me the reach to reach the, the distributors and as i said i have this heat shrink to add to it that it should go over the bolt as well there we're good okay gopro died so update all the cables are off except for this one um i have the negative on here this is the positive going to the house i don't think it's going to be long enough so i'm going to have to do the same thing i just did with this one connecting two wires together that's fine yeah let's actually get these batteries out and get ready to clean up and put the new ones in did i say i've done something to my back if it didn't this is going to help not cases everywhere i don't know where anything is right let's get it out been to a gym in a while and there's very limited headroom which also does not help and we have space oh okay next step is to get this house bank house battery cable thingamajig over to there so i need to find a way to extend it okay I'm just taking a minute because I've decided to change the whole um, shunt running of the line before I had it coming down here underneath the engine. But I've just lifted up the bit of wood that was underneath the batteries and obviously now I have access to all the actual cables. So I've pulled the cable back out from under here and now it's coming directly through me past the dog food where there's actually this main run of lines. And then that will go all the way through under the bed and it will come straight up here. Kind of pointless and unnecessary, but if you're going to do something and you have the opportunity to do it right, you might as well do it right. So we're nearly there. We've got floors back in. I've got this data cable coming up through here, which is a lovely little place. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and yeah, everything is ready to go. It's now just time to lift the biggest box ever into this fitting little space so let's hope it fits okay it's time let's lift this in oh it's not that i'm scared i'm just nervous did i mention that i still have a sore back in between oh i know i've got really bad form but my back is super sore okay oh okay for the hard part whoever designed boats to have such small doors there's really no need for it the space is there Fuck. okay this is when the handles are needed come on little box don't give in now oh we're in Oh, so it's so Ah, oh, back's worse. Definitely worse. Okay, this thing is huge. For today, I'm actually probably just going to leave it sort of like this. It will be moved for the inverter if it ever happens, but for today, just because the fridge has been off for so long, so. Oh, apparently I am super unfit. It's about an hour later. I haven't really filmed anything there because it's getting super late and I need to walk the dogs and I needed to rush and it also wasn't very pretty but what happened was I needed to go expand some of the um, the holes on the lugs that I have. I expanded them already but apparently not big enough. That was stupid not to check that before. Now everything is now wired up. Everything's in. It's not pretty. It's not tidied up but 
it's in and everything's on just going to double check the last thing I need to actually mount on which is the last thing you could mount on is your negative from the bus bar to here not from the bus bar sorry from the shunt to, to there okay so cables are on I don't want to say it but I think it's um it's ready so let's just flick the switch and see if it comes on fingers crossed there's no explosions what way does it turn this way we have power yes oh i am so relieved that that's worked fridge is back working again which is the priority of course next step which will be the rest of the video but i'm going to connect up the the shunt the victron shunt i'm also then going to connect the solar charge controllers because right now all they're doing is they're they're on but they're not putting power through and it's because i haven't actually programmed it for the lithium setting so and thankfully you can do it all while sitting down on an app Whew. okay so i'm back and i'm just going to do one of these now on camera and then do the rest sitting down because my back is so sore just go on to the app settings button go to battery change that select the preset let's go um, and you just go lithium ion phosphate right there hit ok and it's done there is an expert mode that i'm not going to play with right now but that's pretty much it that's the solar charge controllers sorted it's as easy as that literally just 12 volts 30 amps is the max that this is going to allow and lithium ion phosphate and the rest is in there but i could change it and i might change it but right now i'm happy with that okay so now that that's actually set up i'm actually just going to really quickly go turn on the panels so let's see what happens hopefully we shall get some power although it is completely cloudy again so that's one and that's the other one and we have power yes okay slight change of plan the dogs are still sleeping while they're sleeping i'm gonna turn on the shunt and get the display working so I'm too excited now I'm like a kid at Christmas okay so I just plugged a little data cable right in to the shunt again absolute mess right now um, the rest of the boat is no better oh, I'm gonna show you that <laughs> but we have something but now I will actually go walk the dogs now that that works that's a, a plus and Cooper heard me say the word walk, so now he's definitely awake. So, yeah, so, so good. I'm so happy these are actually working. Um, still um, need to sort out the engine battery um, and everything else, but that's not overly interesting for this kind of video. I'll just kind of show that at the end. So I'll maybe just do a really quick bit at the end of this video, just showing the whole system, all tidied up. And yeah, it's worked. All right. He wants to go, he wants to play, he wants to go. Yep, yeah. okay, bye. Okay, I think we are complete. And everything's tidied up too. So we have some extra wood there for a future inverter that might have to go in this spot. We have our MPPTs right here. Our blocks for those. And just, only that's my only problem, I don't have anywhere specifically to mount these. Um, so that's maybe a future job. We then have the power ins for all of the distributors. And in the corner there, we have the DC to DC, which is going from the starter battery. And this is going to be just my little cover for the, the batteries, but that's them all there. With the, the battery monitor plugged in, that's that big long cord and yeah so yeah that's it been 18 months in the planning and four days of just stripping and pulling it all out understanding the system better and how terribly it was done but everything's in it's all working um so far so good again the only thing i can't test is the dc to dc charger i'll maybe try it tonight i can plug in if i plug into shore power then whenever i actually charge the batteries through shore power um it will charge the starter battery the engine battery and then once it gets charged up to the full it should then trickle over to 
the um, the lithium bank. Okay, I'm just editing this video now and I just thought I might as well show you this DC to DC charger working and some of the basic features of it because it is pretty cool. Um, so right now you can see there it's off, There's the status is off and it says below that charge is disabled due to the engine being off effectively. Um, it shows you the voltage of the starter battery right now at 12.6 volts which is also really nice to be able to know that. But if I switch on my battery charger from shore power, you will see that number now start to go up. Now, it still says off, and um, I'll go into the settings here and show you why that is. It's actually a really, really good feature. Okay, when you come to your settings, you can show which function you can do. You might want to do it as a power supply to charge a certain thing, but it's I've got it set as a charger. You can also then come to here and have it set to the lithium iron phosphate, which is what I've got it at. And the next one is engine shutdown detection. This is really interesting and actually a really good system. Effectively, this means that until the starter battery gets back up to 14 volts, this will not put out any charge to the lithium bank, which is great because it means that as soon as the starter batteries get the engine up and running, then it takes maybe 10-15 minutes for the batteries to be charged again on the starter battery to get back up to 14 volts and then after that then it will trickle over to the house bank which is a really great feature so right now you can see it says off because we're only at 13.7 volts if i go back in here and change this from 14 down to 13 just for the sake of this and come back out now we're charging and so instantly now it is charging the batteries if we go back to the bmv you can see that we are actually going up by 20 amps right now which is pretty great and just so that you know that there's no solar on you can see the time on my phone right there it is after midnight so it is pitch black so if i now go back to the dc to dc it's such a good feature. It has um, a shut off detection as well that once it hits down below 12.8, then it will stop working. And that's just because I've got it at 13 volts. So I'll switch it off here and you will now see it will, the voltage will drop right down on that top bank to a point where then that's it, it cuts off. The engine has been detected, but it is no longer working. This is a great workaround. And also if you just don't want this to charge, well, all you need to do is do this and turn off the charger and it will not work. So yeah, let's get back to the video. Other than that, I mean, everything's in. <laughs> Last night I used 3% of the battery from 4 p.m. until 10, 11 a.m. this morning because the solar wasn't connected up. In literally, I don't know, 18 hours, I used 3% of the battery. So yeah, I think we're gonna be okay this year. Um, Obviously things change once you get an inverter, then you can power more things and, and then you're using more electricity. So yeah, but like, thank you so much for everyone who's kind of watched up to this point. Um, this has just been my little passion project. I am in no way an electrician. I am no way really giving you this as advice as something that you should do. Um, this is what I've done. And if you want to copy that, or if you want to do parts of what I've done, all of the parts in the list from building the batteries and all the components that I've used, uh, all the Victron components, they're all linked down below. And some of those links might be affiliate links, so I might get a bit of a kickback if you do buy from them, which would be amazing. But just thanks for watching. Um, I'm just so, so happy that it worked. It's just the, big, the first big project that we've had on the boat. So now it's time to tidy up this absolute mess. The boat has just been an absolute bomb site for five days. And I need to get another video edited. So for that, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.